Hello, welcome to this video produced as part of the Further Maths Support Programme's material for A-Level Maths and Further Maths. This one focuses on dimensional analysis and the f it's one in the first in a series of four and here we introduce the basic ideas of dimensions of quantities and their associated units. The three dimensions in mechanics are mass, length and time. Now they're denoted as indicated there by the letters capital M, capital L and capital T. Now they're associated as usual with measures for mass in terms of kilograms, in terms of lengths which are measured in meters and time which are measured in seconds. So what are the, in these terms the dimensions of velocity and acceleration? Well velocity is distance moved in time taken so that is a length divided by a time. So from that we say that the velocity, dimension of velocity is LT to the minus 1. Acceleration is a change in velocity over time. So that would be an LT minus 1 quantity which is what we've just worked out divided by time which that gives us LT to the minus 2. So the dimensions of velocity are LT to the minus 1 and of acceleration LT to the minus 2. So we can put those answers in. Notice that velocity in square brackets is the way we, we express the verbal form what are the dimensions of velocity and similarly for acceleration. So the square brackets should be read as dimensions of well, what about working out the dimensions of density? Now density is defined as mass over volume so it's going to be mass divided by m divided by l cubed which is ml to the minus 3. What about force? Now force from Newton's second law is mass times acceleration. We've already done acceleration so it's m times lt to the minus 2. What about pressure? Pressure is force over area, so that's an mlt to the minus 2 for force divided by L squared for area. So we end up with ml to the minus 1, t to the minus 2. And energy, well work done is change in energy, so we want force times distance moved for the work, so that's m lt to the minus 2 times l so that's m l squared t to the minus 2. You could get that alternatively by thinking of the expression for kinetic energy which is a half mv squared. A half is dimensionless so you'd have m and then lt to the minus 1 for velocity squared which again is m l squared t to the minus 2. So that's how you work out dimensions of quantities, uh, always from the definitions, and they all are always expressible, the mechanical ones anyway, in terms of the three dimensions of mass, length and time. So there's our answers. Now what about dimensions of an angle? Well to do this we need to think about how we define angle and it's so long since angle was introduced in the curriculum that it's perhaps difficult to con reconceive that. Though if you've done radian measure you'll probably have an answer to this. Here indeed is the definition of radian measure which is a way of defining an angle which is of most use in mathematics in particular in the calculus of trigonometry. You define an angle in radians by drawing two lines as radius of a circle and completing the arc so that you have a sector containing the angle. And then we say that the angle in radian measure, theta, is equal to s divided by r, the arc length divided by the radius. Now a moment's thought should tell you that ideas of similarity mean that it doesn't matter how big the circle that you have in mind here, it will still give you the same answer because if you use a bigger radius, scaling r up by some number k, say, 
for a similar figure you will also scale up this, the arc length by the same factor so when you divide the arc length by the radiance you'll end up with the same number so it is a consistent definition now if that's our definition of radian measure we can see that if you were to take what we recognize as a right angle for theta you'd be able to say that s is a half of pi r taking a quarter of the usual formula so for 90 degrees which is a right angle that's the same as well if the arc length is a half pi r and you divide it by r you end up with pi by 2 so the equivalence between radians and degrees is expressed by that uh, equation and of course you can get any other angle by just scaling up either side of the equation but the point is that however you measure your angles in traditional radians or in this new measure of uh, sorry in tra traditional degrees or this new measure of radians you're going to end up uh, with a multiple of or just the ratio of the arc length to the radius which would be L over L so you'd end up with L to the zero which is uh, dimensionless so uh, we would end up concluding that an angle is dimensionless so I'd have to write that down dimensionless so angles are dimensionless is our conclusion and uh, I've written my conclusion up there so there we are that's it theta is dimensionless now let's talk about frequency for a moment if you talk about frequency it's some event the number of times it occurs in a particular time so you're dividing the number of occurrences by time so that's going to end up since the number of occurrences is not involving mass length or, ti uh, or time it's going to be ending up as just t to the minus one similarly angular speed would be the change in angle over a time but we've just agreed that an angle has no dimensions so that too will be t to the minus one now notice that angular speed is usually measured in radians per second there's no reason in principle why it shouldn't be degrees per second but it's usually radians per second and that's because we're entering more deeply into the area of mathematics and calculus where we use the unit which is most appropriate and that it turns out to be the radian okay there's our answers to those two questions t to the minus one now let's um, we've got our comment on angular speed given in radians now let's look at a more interesting question sometimes we need to find the dimensions of an unknown quantity not least because it, it gives us an aid to thinking what units to use to measure it we have a formula here which relates spring force to its extension and its unstretched length its so-called natural length that's a formula which embodies Hooke's law you may or may not have met that that doesn't matter but that's the formula and it involves a constant of proportionality which is lambda what are the dimensions of lambda well in order to work those out the first thing to do is to make lambda the subject of the equation now if we do that we'll involve t x and l we know the dimensions of t which is a force we know the dimensions of x which is a length and we know the dimensions of L which is also a length so we'll we'll be able to express the dimensions of lambda in terms of the the ex, the, the quantities we've already to which we've already assigned dimensions so there we are we change the subject getting the rather obvious result TL over X and then you put the dimensions in for T there's force MLT to the minus 2 there's length L and another length underneath so we end up with the conclusion that the dimensions of lambda are ml t to the minus 2 well that brings us to the end of this video on dimensions quantities in units the next in the same series will be about the idea of dimensional consistency I hope to be with you later to explore that <laughs>